You might recognize this as the Honda Goldwing, a motorcycle many will proclaim to be the epitome of luxury, sophistication, and class. It cradles a flat six motor, one of the biggest available in motorcycling. In the Goldwing, it offers a smooth, relaxed ride and is therefore a major hit among the discerning gentlemen. That is while in this guise, but what happens if we take this big friendly giant of a motor and put it somewhere else? Um, that doesn't look relaxed or sophisticated. Um, here we have the Honda Valkyrie, the flat six motor of elegance and class in the Goldwing. But here, wrapped in a chassis of knife throwing, beer chugging, and man meat. Okay, there we go. Ugh. Okay, be nice. Don't hurt me. Turn on the key on the side here. Pull the clutch in over there. Push the starter. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's not, yeah. What is under this thing? That's like a truck. It's like a monster truck. Jesus. Whoa. Clearly, this is not the suit wearing dignitary found in the Goldwing. However, this is not the current 1800 Goldwing mill, but the older 1520cc version, pushing a somewhat more sedate 100 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque. Normally I would mourn such a loss in performance, but not today. Yeah, so given those figures, this is not technically a fast motorcycle. But it, as Ricky Gervais would say, I don't care. I don't care. I mean, it's, it, it has so much pantomime. The way it makes a noise, the way you feel when you go forward. It's, it's the feeling of speed without actually being fast. And I mean, that is what matters. In fact, for many people, that's probably a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> the headlines of this Valkyrie are all about the huge motor, but we shouldn't forget that there is a motorcycle attached to it also. So this is a cruiser, but sitting here you wouldn't exactly know that because unlike other cruisers which are all sort of foot peg forward, hands in the air like that, this isn't like that. I mean the foot peg's sort of below me instead of you know, out front, and the reason for that I suspect is the fact that there's a whole lot of engine in the way, so they can't do that. But the upside of that is that while it might lose a lot of street cred, it does gain in comfort, because having your feet forward and the handlebars high is not comfortable. In fact, it's, 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 it's rather painful after a while. So what happens here is that you have all the street cred, people think you're cool, but meantime, if I close my eyes, I may as well be sitting on a gold wing. It's the best of every world. This is an American motorcycle, so naturally it has had half a mountain's worth of steel and chrome put into it. In fact, it has 327 kilograms of steel and chrome. Yeah, so as you can imagine, this is heavy. It's really heavy. In fact, what you, what you think you're seeing here is the bike being pulled down to the earth by gravity, but no, what you're actually seeing is the earth pulled up to the bike. And, yeah, that has a profound effect. I mean, it feels solid and stable and kind of everything, especially around corners where, well, I mean, corners aren't really a thing. I mean, they're just the thing, those things in between the straights where you get to open up and make a lot of noise. In fact, I don't think this bike so much goes around as much goes around corners as the whole entire earth turns to suit the motorcycle. So as you probably picked up, this is not a new motorcycle. In fact, this is a 2004 model off the showroom floor of Fire It Up, who seemed to somehow find exotic motorcycles like this. This was never actually brought into South Africa. I don't know why. Maybe they think we're not, you know, American enough. But as you can imagine, 2004, I mean, there's, there's not that much technology going on here. In fact, if you look, if you want electronics, well, it's got spark plugs, and that's really about it. And that kind of suits a lot of the Americans, I think. I mean, imagine that. It's like, you know, we don't want no commie electronicals, no, no didgeridoo, things like that. In fact, 
it doesn't even have ABS. I mean, when was the last time you rode a motorcycle that doesn't have ABS? It's a bit of a shock, first time you have to brake hard, especially like I did early on in the raid, only to find the wheels lock up. I mean, that doesn't happen anymore. But it is probably part of the reason why this bike has lost it the way it has. I mean, it's got a choke. You, you pull the lever there to start in the morning and it's a choke. Because it's got carburetors. I mean, carburetors, remember those? <laughs> it is brilliant. It means you can maintain it very well yourself and there's very little things that can go wrong. And that's why this bike feels brilliant. I mean, that and the fact that Fire It Up will always kind of make sure they get good motorcycles. They'll look after the motorcycles. They'll give it a thorough go through. I mean, I look at it, it's got these old school dials in miles per hour because it's American. Old school idiot lights, old school switches. Everything is very old school. It feels good. And of course, this giant engine, this massive, wonderful, giant, noisy monster of an engine. That is something I don't know how much longer we're going to see either. Maybe it'll just be all electronic. Wouldn't that be an absolute shame? I like electronic, but we're going to miss this. I'm gonna miss this. Not only was the bike imported from America, the Valkyrie and the Goldwing were actually manufactured there as well. And some said, me included, that back then it was quite probably the best made bike in America, which I know doesn't say a lot for its competition. However, it didn't prove quite as successful a model as Honda America had probably anticipated. And that's more than likely down to the fact that uh, for a cruiser, it didn't have what cruisers need, especially over there in the US of A. And that is, of course, a ruddy great big V-twin. The flat six is pretty amazingly smooth and relatively sophisticated compared to its competition, which isn't what a lot of owners were looking for in a badass bike. But I love the six straight through pipes on this example from Fire It Up. They give it a proper naughty sound. If you like the look and sound of it as well, then it could be yours for a mere 89,000 Rand. I'd love to see Honda do something similar with the new Goldwing. Uh, they have, after all, done a bagger version of it already, a bit like BMW did with the K16 GT. BM has hinted with previous concepts that it might actually do a naked version of the K1600, which I reckon would be utterly fantastic. Though, I think, to be fair, they're probably preoccupied at the moment with the impending launch of the R18 Cruiser. A 2020 version of the Honda Valkyrie, though? Yeah, that would be pretty damn cool. <laughs>